Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here, and this uh, lesson is multiply frac. I'm sorry, fraction multiplication. It's section uh, seven six in our textbook. Don't forget, all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. And I'm sitting out in my truck today, so you might hear some waiting for a meeting to get started. You might hear some traffic in the background. So anyway, if you guys can, would you guys click uh, like on this video, or don't like, or leave a comment uh, if you found it uh, helpful? That would be great. Thanks a lot. And there's our uh, co common course strand for our teachers. And our question is, how can we multiply fractions, or how do we multiply fractions? Okay, so we'll go back and show you a picture how we did it in the last lesson using a model, and then uh, we'll get a general rule. It's kind of slick how this works, you guys. Um, all right, so here Dora has three fifths of her project left to do. If she finishes finishes one half of that today, how much of the project will she do today? Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to find um, uh, one half of three-fifths. So how much of the project does Dora have left to do? Well, she has three-fifths of the project left to do. And of that fraction that is left, how much will she ha uh, finish today? Well, it says uh, right here that she's going to finish one half of that today. Okay, so we're going to do... Um, uh, we're going to multiply one half times three fifths. That's the same as one half of three fifths. Okay, so we're looking for half of this number right here. And remember, of means multiply. So one half times three fifths. Okay, so here's one way. This is what we did last time. Uh, we'll use a model. So over here we have this uh, this uh, rectangle. This whole rectangle represents one whole project. So let's go ahead and shade three of these to show three fifths that she has. Uh, three fifths of the project left to do. Okay, so there's three fifths right there. And then now we're going to draw a horizontal line across that rectangle right here to show two equal parts. That way we can take half of it. Okay, so we're going to cut this in half. There it is, cut in half. Okay, and then now we're going to shade half of those yellow uh, sections, actually gold sections right here. We're going to shade this bottom half blue right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and shade that blue right there. And we'll move that up. Okay, and then uh, so count the sections that are shaded twice, in this case blue, and write a fraction of the parts of the whole that are shaded twice blue. Okay, so let's look at all these rectangles. There's five down here, there's five up here, there's ten total, and there's there's three of them uh, here that uh, are shaded, so there's three tenths of them that are being shaded right there, blue right there. So um, uh, one half times three fifths is going to equal that three tenths right there. Okay, there's there's three out of the ten that are being shaded blue right there. Okay, all right. So one half times uh, three fifths equals uh, three tenths, and then and then check this out. It says uh, compare the numerator and the denominators. Okay, and the product with the numerators and the denominators. Well, look at this. One and three. One times three doesn't that equal three? And 2 times 5, doesn't that equal 10 right there? So describe what we notice. Well, it's pretty clear right there that we can multiply the numerators to get the product numerator and multiply the denominators to get the product denominator. So 1 half times 3 fifths, all we got to do is multiply across on top 1 times 3 and multiply across on bottom 2 times 5. We get 3 tenths. That's our rule. That's how we can do this. It's nice and easy. So Dora completed 3 tenths of her project today. Always answer in the context of the problem. I forget too, you guys, but always try to go back and answer the question, what it's saying. And I, and I do forget too. I bet your teacher does too sometimes, you guys. Uh, I do all the time. I've been teaching for 28 years. I still forget. I mean, kids make mistakes. Tell me I make mistakes all the time. So anyway, so give your teacher a break. Be nice to your teacher. Okay, so remember, you can write a whole number as a fraction with a denominator of 1, okay? So we're going to find 4 times 5 twelfths, and we're going to write that product in simplest form. Okay, and so so 4 is the same as 4 over 1 right here, so we're going to write the, the whole number as a fraction, so we'll just put a 1, insert a 1 right there, okay? And then now we'll multiply the numerators, okay? So we're going to go across and do 4 times 5, so 5 is going to go in there, and then 1 times 12. So 12, 1 and 12 are going to go in there. So we're going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Okay, here we go. What's 4 times 5? Well, 
Uh, four times five is, uh, I like counting by fives, five, 10, 15, 20. I'm using my fingers, holding them up four times. So four times five is 20, and then one times 12 is 12 right there. Okay, so 20 over 12. Okay, so then uh, now we can see if we can, uh, is there a, a number that goes into 20 and 12 nice and evenly? Think of the biggest number. Two goes into both those numbers, but so does four. So what we're going to do is take 20 and divide it by four and take 12 and divide it by four. Can you hear that traffic? It's a busy day today. So we'll put 20 there, and we'll divide them both by 4s, and 20 divided by 4 is 5, and, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. Okay, so it reduces to 5 thirds, and then they want us to uh, uh, replace that with a mixed number. So 5 thirds is the same as um, uh, 3 thirds plus 2 thirds, and 3 thirds equals 1, so 1 plus 2 thirds is that 1 and 2 thirds right there. Okay. All right, so let's answer the question. 4 times 5 twelfths equals 5 thirds, or 1 and 2 thirds right there. Okay, easy enough. Huh? Let's try another one, you guys. Uh, all right, so is the answer reasonable? First of all, let's explain. Okay, so uh, since uh, 5 twelfths is less than 1, then multiplying the whole number uh, 4 is going to be less than 4, because when we multiply a number that's less than 1, it's going to give us a product that's less than 1. So look at this. 1 and 2 thirds, that's definitely less than 4. Did I say 1? Less than 4. Okay, so whenever I multiply a number times a number that's less than 1, it's going to give me an answer that's going to be less than the number that we multiplied. Also, you guys, check it out, you guys. 5 twelfths is a little bit less than 6 twelfths. And since 6 twelfths equals a half, then if we multiplied 4 times a half, it will be 2. So our product is going to be just a little bit less than 2. And 1 and 2 thirds is also less than 2. So heck yeah, our answer is reasonable on that. All right, so here they give us uh, try this, and we're going to do what's called the substitution property. You'll use more and more the higher you get in math. So we're going to evaluate C times 4 fifths, and we're going to substitute C equals 5 eighths in there. So what number does C represent? It represents this 5 eighths right there, okay? So we're going to go, so we're going to replace C in the expression right here. So we're going to replace this. C with 5 8 so we'll put 5 8 right here and 5 8 right here okay and then now we'll go ahead and multiply the numerator so now we're going to multiply 5 times 4 so 5 times 4 is going to give us 20 and then now we'll multiply the denominator so 8 times 5 so 8 times 5 will give us 40 okay and then write the product in simplest form okay can you see that 20 is half of 40 so this uh, reduces to one half okay if we divided that by 20 we get one if we divided by that by 20 we get two or you can notice that uh, 10 goes into those but you'll have to reduce it down because we'll get uh, two fourths and two fourths reduces also to one half right there so c times four fifths is equal to um, uh, one half when c is five eighths okay and they give us all of this we just got to fill that stuff in right there okay all right, so uh, since 4 fifths is being multiplied by a number that's less than 1, should the product be greater than or less than 4 fifths? Well, remember, when we multiply a number by a number that's less than 1, it is going to be less than, okay? All right, you guys, I hope that uh, helped. Take care, you guys.